Okay, good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Thanks for coming here. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, multi-instance capable GPUs that we recently got in our CERN infrastructure. But before I do this, a few words about me. Um, it's my first time that I'm on an Open Infra Summit. In my education, I'm actually a physicist. And uh, I've been in, at CERN already for a long time. But I only joined CERN IT in uh, 2005. And since then, I have worked at various IT services, uh, like batch systems and uh, integrations with, uh, with, with GRID, what we call the GRID. And last year, I actually joined the uh, CERN cloud team, and which is why I'm here now. There I took over responsibilities for the GPUs that we have. Here's an outline of my presentation, so I will start with a few words about who we are. You probably know us already. So uh, that will be probably nothing new for you. Then I will um, give you a short overview over the, the current status of our cloud infrastructure. And finally switch to the main topic, which is GPUs in the CERN cloud. Starting with uh, example use cases, our main user will say a, bit, uh, a few words about that. It's pretty cool what they're doing. Um, how we deploy the GPUs in the OpenStack infrastructure and uh, what we do with virtual GPUs and Meek. Okay, so CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. It's the world's largest particle physics laboratory, founded in uh, 1954, with currently 23 member states and quite a lot of associated states as well. Um, we're doing fundamental research in physics so non-profit, and we are running the uh, largest machine that exists on Earth, which is literally 27 kilometers. And you can see here, this is uh, Geneva, the town of Geneva, this is Lake Geneva, and uh, this is where the tunnel is. It's 100 meters under Earth, so you won't see anything there when you, when you go there and look for it. And this is actually the certain main site here. This is our flagship. Um, uh, machine. This is the LHC with the four experiments, pictures of, of the four main experiments that we have here. It runs the most powerful magnets on Earth with 8.3 uh, uh, um, Tesla. And in order to achieve that, they have to be cooled down to uh, two Kelvins uh, to compare with uh, three Kelvins that you have in interstellar space, all, of the, all around the 27 kilometers by the magnets. Um, and we also don't want to collide with air, so we need a very high vacuum, which is actually 10 times less particles than you can find on the moon. But there's a lot of other things that we are doing apart from that. Uh, and it's you already heard about, I guess. And if you visit CERN, you can actually see uh, things like, uh, this is the first accelerator that uh, existed at CERN, which you can visit now. There's an antimatter factory, and this is actually from the computer center. And this is an old detector, which happens, well, which you can actually visit if uh, go, you go down to LHCB and uh, manage to get a visit there. Okay, to the main topic of the talk, which is the cloud infrastructure and the GPUs. So we are in production since uh, July 20. 13, meaning that's uh, 10 years now. Currently, we have 8,700 physical nodes, all managed by Ironic, and 1,800 of them being hypervisors running 13K active VMs. The software is based on RDO. Uh, it's mainly x86-64, and we have now, since last year, a few machines running uh, ARM64 which are mainly used for, for building purposes and uh, porting experiment software to this architecture. The versions depend on the, uh, on the component, uh, and we have uh, versions between train and Z, uh, Z being the, the latest um, one that we are using for Octavia. Come back to this in a minute. The infrastructure is managed with Puppet and uh, Foreman, and we have, uh, for our secret management, we have an in-house developed uh, tool Right now, we are running an, a campaign to uh, evacuate all the, the hypervisors and move them to Red Hat 8 or Alma Linux from CentOS 7 because we have to phase that out. The goal here is to get rid of, uh, of Train, the our oldest, oldest release, and catch up with, uh, with uh, Nova to get it to newer versions. 
and in particular get rid of private patches and backports that we had to do. This is an overview of the components that we are using, and there's only one thing that, is, uh, that I wanted to mention here is the, the addition of Octavia, which is coming soon for load balancing. Okay, now let me switch to GPUs. That's why I'm here, so. <laughs> uh, if you look at, the, at this figure on the right-hand side, this is a wrap-up of the number of jobs which have been run by different communities on the batch farm on GPU resources, and you see there's one which is sticking out. And these are our colleagues from, uh, who are running the, the accelerators. And what they're actually doing is they are simulating how the particles and the beams interact with the accelerator complex. Um, besides of that, we have, of course, machine learning applications, uh, which are mainly run by the experiments, and they try various things where GPUs may be helpful. There's quite a lot of developing, development and testing ongoing, probably like everywhere. Looking at the use cases, um, as I said, the, the beam simulation is a quite interesting one, not only because they are the biggest users of us, these are two figures on the left-hand side. You can see how much they profit from uh, using GPUs. So this is a double logarithmic plot. Um, in the, so in red, you see the CPU, um, the number of particles that are, that are simulated, and the computational time needed for this. And you see this uh, goes up um, exponentially, while for GPUs, it stays flat for, for a long, long time. The right-hand side plot is also interesting, where they made a comparison uh, between different um, GPU uh, architectures that they have been using, in particular the V100 on, um, on, on the Google Cloud and uh, our own on-premise ones, and A100s. They don't have the a one on site yet, but the, what you can see here is actually they don't profit much from the different architecture, from the newer GPUs. And the reason for this is that they depend on double precision and the number of registers in the GPUs. And there's no, not much difference between these two GPU types. Um, no, sorry, which passed. GPUs uh, is a real game, game changer for them. They can do things they uh, were not able to, to do before with this. So they are a very important customer for us. <clears throat> Let me turn to the uh, different GPUs that we have. Uh, we have uh, about 70. T4 machines, well, most of them have one card, but one, which has four cards, so it's very heterogeneous. We have around 20 of these V100s. In this case, uh, most of them having four cards per machine, and then the recent additions, in, which came in, in in autumn, after one year waiting for them, is uh, 72 cards, A100, and 18 machines. And these are now running in, in production. Um, one thing that is probably worth to mention is that in the computer, in the data center, in uh, the main data center at, at CERN, we, are, we only have NVIDIA cards so far, but some of the experiments, they are running their own farms uh, close to the, to, to, the, um, to the experiments, and some of them also, also have other vendors. The main de uh, GPU deployment models are, our workhorse is PCI pass-through. Uh, apart from that, we have a few cases where we agreed to deploy the resources as bare metal, and uh, we have some use cases for, um, for vGPUs and have been working with this for a while, testing this, though it's not widely used for the time being. PCI pass-through, uh, here's a brief uh, overview of how this works. You basically have your hardware, but uh, in this case I just put uh, three GPUs in there, and you so the, 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 uh, the um, hypervisor just passes this on to the, to the different VMs. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. So the hypervisor doesn't know anything about the GPU, meaning that uh, we don't have any information if the GPU is used or not. This is really happening on the, on the client side, which runs the GPU drivers. So this is very nice. It's, it's, uh, it's fairly easy to configure. It works fine, usually and gives full control over the GPU to the users, which makes users very happy usually. The cons is that it gives full control over the GPU to the user, meaning that we have no idea what the user is doing. If the resources are efficiently used, and since these resources are very scarce and expensive for us, um, it's not optimal. 
there's no way for us to share the resources in case they, they fall, fall idle for whatever reason. We have actually seen some issues, which is a funny story, when uh, we tried to, uh, to move from center 7 to, to 8. We changed all our default images from, uh, from BIOS to uh, UEFI boot. And at that point, um, we started to see issues with, uh, with um, GPUs with have, which have more than 32 gigabyte of memory. And that's actually a fix which is coming up for, for Red Hat, which is not relevant for us yet because we are still running CentOS 7 at the moment on most of the hyper, well, not on most of the hyper, so we, we are still far away from, from Rel 9, but uh, with Rel 9.3, this will be fixed. Fortunately, there's a working workaround, which is just boot the guests in BIOS mode. So if you see this issue, either go for 9.3 on the hypervisor and test the patch or use BIOS mode. Okay. Um, on pro GPU provisioning, our most important customers are actually ourselves, so secondary IT services, namely the batch service, uh, which is HD conduit driven. We have uh, some GPUs in interactive services, and we have a service which is called Swan, which is a front end to uh, Python notebooks. They also have uh, quite a lot of, uh, in particular, our T4s, and um, a specific framework for machine learning, which is based on Kubeflow. There are very few direct allocations to the users, and we try to avoid them because from these guys we can uh, actually ask we can ask them for uh, for monitoring information uh, in the PCI pass through mode, which we don't have, and try to optimize things this way. And this is actually one of the examples of the monitoring. This is from the from the batch um, uh, colleagues. In the upper part, these are mainly T4s. In the lower parts, these are in the middle part is the V100s, and the lower parts are the, the, the A100s. You can't read it, it doesn't matter. There are three things that you can see here. So you have some periods where, in particular, the V100s and the A100s are pretty busy, and this is mainly because of uh, when our colleagues from, from Beams become quite active. Then you see some areas where there are gaps, and that is actually when we take out the, the machines for, for other purposes. Sometimes we have to lend them out for trainings or something like that. So we just train them, put them somewhere else, and then they return at some point again, and then you see data again. And then you have uh, these areas here where you see some greenish things, which basically means that these GPUs are not fully used. And that's one of the things that we would like to address. Okay, virtual GPUs. That is actually one way that we are hoping uh, can help us making better use of the, of the GPUs for those applications which don't manage to fill up the, the full GPU by just sharing them. The setup has been done already for a while for, based on Tesla T4s um, and on time-based GPU sharing. We have uh, only two physical GPUs dedicated for, for this purpose at the moment. And the way it works is you have your, again, your, your hardware with a physical GPU on it. You have the um, hypervisor operating system. And then you run one component of the software on the hypervisor itself, which is quite neat because this allows you to configure the, uh, the GPU and get monitoring information. And then on the, um, on the VMs, you have the second part of the drivers, which uh, is the virtual GPU driver, they call it grid driver, which requires actually a license. So it uh, calls out to, the, to our license server to get a license token. And um, then each of these uh, VMs can, can use the, the GPU. Um, I already said, so one of the big advantages is that you have, that we have access to the usage of the, of the GPU this way um, for sharing this, uh, so we, it allows sharing of these expensive scarce resources. But there are some limitations. In particular, there's a performance hit when several users start to use the GPU because of the time slicing. And we had actually people who have been complaining about that. There was one user uh, running on his uh, GPU alone and then somebody else sneaked in and he got only half, half of the performance. So users didn't like that too much. One way out is with the new resources, we have the A100s, uh, which allow MIG. Basically, MIG means that you can partition the, the GPU into different smaller ones. And this is kind of a physical um, partitioning. 
So the idea is here to create these MIG devices and export them to the VM, so taking based of, of both worlds. Um, and we expect that there's uh, less or no performance hit when multiple users start to use the, the GPU. There are some limitations, though, which is as soon as you sp switch on MIG, you lose some of the monitoring information. What you can monitor still is uh, the power of the, of the bar, um, but you don't have the information about the individual um, usage of the, of the GPU or the, even of the full GPU card. Maybe this is going to, to change in the future. It's a limitation of the drivers. Um, so we have a prototype ready using this. Uh, at the moment, we have one of our hypervisors dedicated with the setup, so four cards. GPU monitoring is done with uh, DCGM and the CollectD plugin, which sends the data to InfluxDB and then to Grafana. And you here see some example plots where you see the four uh, GPU cards uh, not very much used at the moment. And we had a few pilot users trying to use these. To help them to set up things um, consistently, we created a puppet module for centrally managed VMs. And uh, if users do this, they just have to do one little thing in their manifest. They just add this little line here, include GPU, the GPU module. And this will make sure that uh, drivers are consistent with it will install the drivers. It will make sure that the version is consistent with uh, what we have on the hypervisor. It will install CUDA. It will also um, register the client and get a, a license key. So it's relatively straightforward. There are a couple of use cases we are hoping we will be able to cover with, with this um, approach. Uh, the goal is, of course, to improve the resource usage. As no, not all use cases can fully exploit the, the GPUs. Uh, one use case is um, the uh, interactive services, which I already mentioned, where people can just send, uh, log in and try their, their stuff if, if it works before they send it to the batch system to do larger operations or larger jobs. It's also a possible use case to allow users rapid access for GPU resources on, re on user request. And, uh, the last use case I briefly mentioned in the beginning, we have sometimes people running workshops and trainings where, which require access to GPUs. And they sometimes just say, I need next week uh, 40 GPUs. Please give them to me. And uh, of course, with hard resource, you can do this. So this may be a way out to do this, to simplify this. However, we have seen some stability issues, which is why we haven't put that into production yet. Typically, errors where synchronization errors with placement uh, which may be related either to, uh, to our backports that we had to do in, in Nova, or it may be driver related. Sometimes the vGPU is not being found for some reason. Um, the only way I found so far to fix this is to reboot the hypervisor, which is, of course, not a good, good way to get forward. So this is something we have to investigate before we can continue with this. <clears throat> the next step will then be to uh, have proper quota and scheduling for different vGPU flavors. And uh, for this, we are also closely uh, looking at, at uh, what Cyborg can actually do for us in the future. We uh, will start small and see how it goes. And then we will decide whether we continue with this or stick to the um, PCI pass-through. So our plans is, uh, the, the plans are to investigate the remaining issues that we have seen, which I just mentioned. We need to, to go on with a Nova upgrade because we believe that uh, this way we can eliminate the local patches and backports, which are related also for, to, the, to the GPUs, and hope that we can uh, improve the, the stability of the, of the thing. And uh, have a look at, at Cyborg. Um, to support different GPU flavors. We also are looking into ways to uh, quotas for GPUs and alternative architectures, meaning our ARM nodes, preferably in a way which is consistent with each other. So lots of work to be done. I'm coming already to the conclusions. So we are running a whole zoo of different uh, GPUs 
and we have a whole zoo of different use cases. One of them is sticking out, of course, but that may change in the future. Our workhorse is um, PCI pass-through mode. <clears throat> we have a proof of concept for A100s with MIG on the hypervisor, exporting the, uh, the GPUs um, to individual virtual machines. And uh, yeah, top priority at the moment for the whole team is to phase out CentOS 7 and go for Red Hat 8. This is a picture of the combined, well, of the Linux team and the, the cloud team. Um, and that's the end of the talk. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Brilliant report and progress, but what was actually the motivation to build for the liquids? Why? Why? Because we. Why not therapy? Why not Well, um, I th we try to avoid giving out bare metal if we can, because we lose a bit control over, over the resources this way. It's, even if they are still in, in ironic, um, it's a policy that, that we have. Okay. Yes, resource management, exactly. Yes? The, mic the microphone. Hi, uh, just a quick question. There is a limitation uh, that the, the version of the driver on the host and the version of the driver on the guest, they have to be the same, yes. at least on the same branch. Yes. How do you plan to deal with the issue where users come in and they need another version or they need another version of CUDA, which will require another version of your driver on the host? Do you plan to have different hosts with different version of the driver? Is that uh, for the time being, we have this uh, module that I, was, uh, that, that, I, uh, that I showed you. I can just go back to the, to the slide. Um, this one. This is exactly why we, did, why we did this. It fixes the version and it... And, and, um, so this way, we have uh, control over which version of the drivers we are running on, on, the, uh, on the VM, the users running on the VM. And if users decide not to use this, for example, they don't want to have a puppet managed machine, they are, they are basically on their own. So we just have to, to tell them this version is, uh, you need, you need, to, need to, to use this version. But then it's, of course, difficult when we go for an upgrade, because that is going to be a lot of manual work. So the recommendation is to go for this. Yes? I have a question that's not directly um, to this part, but um, how do you do storage, actually? I'm just wondering. How do you pass out the storage to the virtual machines and then to the virtual machines? Uh, <laughs> there's a, actually a parallel talk on, on this topic, which uh, is done by two colleagues of mine, okay. um, which is running at the same time slot, unfortunately. But I can redirect you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yes? Uh, I didn't understand your comment about why MIG would be better for users. Like, I thought the difference between MIG and vCPU with licenses is, you know, if you slice it in half, MIG is statically partitioned, so the user is only ever going to get half the GPU. Right? Yes. But if you build a vCPU, if, if no one else is using the GPU or the other half, like, they get the whole thing, so they always get more. Yeah, the thing is that it's hard to explain to users. Exactly. So the, the user experience in time sharing is, is, is worse. I, I agree with your comment. It's, it's true that uh, if nobody else is there, they get the full, full GPU with time sharing. But then they usually don't understand why uh, all of a sudden the, um, the performance drops and they, they ask questions why it's like this. And uh, so this adds a lot of support load which is uh, why we want to try MIG and to see, see if this works better for the users. I mean, if they, if they know what they, what they have, they, they often they, they just measure what they have so that they can estimate uh, how long the job will take and these kind of things. And of course, if you, if you have time sharing and other people sneak in, then this is, doesn't work anymore. Yeah. I think there was somebody else. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> is there, I know that the licensing, right, is the, the NVIDIA grid licensing, I, I'm assuming. Is there anything up and coming that is actually open source or uses like the AMD graphics cards or the new Intel ones that you're aware of that as we're planning might be willing to wait for? Huh? Okay. For the VGPUs, there's not that I know. There's, any, there's nothing coming up that they would open this to the best I know. I'll be in contact with, in contact with them also. Yeah. One more. Hello. Thanks for the talk. Uh, I would like to know if you tried it. Uh, is there any limitation concerning the number of device uh, in MIG that you can add to a VM? Because I did some tests uh, a while ago, and there was a limitation by limit, by limit, I think. On time sharing or in I, like for? I, I think I for tried me. it all uh, to add multiple VGPU devices to a VM, and it didn't work. Uh, yes. Yeah. To, uh, to, as far as I know, at the moment, it doesn't work. You, okay. you can only have one <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. virtual GPU. Yes. Thank you. Per VM. Yeah. Let's hope that changes in the future as well. Any more questions? Yeah? Um, that's not in our hands. We just deliver the, uh, the infrastructure and uh, the GPUs. So what the users actually do at the end, if they decide to, uh, I mean, these this Beams guys, they, uh, they, they can do things now which they were not able to do before because it would have taken months of computing time. And they, are actually, they have plans to extend that to, uh, to other uh, simulations as well, so to spread it out. So they have uh, increasing requirements for GPU resources. For the experiments, um, it's actually similar. They also have, but I'm not aware at the moment of, of concrete requests on this. So this is nothing that, that we are driving. It's uh, something that the users are driving, and they, they will tell us how many resources they will need in the future, and for which purpose, of course. Hope that answers the, answers the question. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.